Hey guys, how's it going? I thought I'd do a slightly different video today where I'm gonna be showing off this new, or at least a new laptop to me, Sony VAIO PCG Z505R. Now this is a really beautiful little Ultrabook from around 1998 or so, uh, which I picked up for about 10 bucks. Got it posted, there was a guy selling, I think he was going through all his equipment at his workplace and he sold this. Comes with Windows XP, originally came with Windows 98, but it doesn't seem to run too bad on this little laptop. I picked it up because uh, Sony VAIO laptops, especially in the late 90s, they're kind of just coming on the scene. They were, they were really like the premium end of uh, laptops at the time. And I always kind of wanted one because uh, they're so well designed. And I'm just gonna show off this one a little bit. Because of what it is, it's actually a Pentium 2 366. I believe with 128 megabytes of RAM. I have been trying to get some of my games to work on it, but because it's got Windows XP, a lot of the games that I collect tend to be 95, Windows 95 or Windows 98. So a lot of them aren't running that well, even in compatibility mode. So I actually struggled to get a few. I haven't comprehensively gone through my collection to try and get games working on this, but I did get a couple. You can see I've got uh, Doom and uh, Needs for Speed 3 there. But first of all, let's have a quick look at the machine. So. Like I said, this was an ultra portable. So take a look at it here. I'm just gonna close it. I think it might go into sleep mode. But it's still got that distinctive VAIO design. So even from uh, 1998, it's got that. And it's got the nice original violet colors. So I think when VAIOs came out, they VAIO was slightly a play on the color word of, of violet, but um, you still got that. There's a few scratches on it, but it's not in too bad a shape. And it came with um, came with this external CD-ROM drive, which is actually a PCMI card. So I'll just pull that out. There you go, PCI card uh, interface. And what I really like, and this, this is an example of the design actually. So when you want to pack it away, you just roll it around like that and it all keeps it nice and compact. This was really for, for businessmen of the day, I guess, so you needed something pretty light. Um, but check that out. How cool is that? Well, what a great design. Obviously with USB nowadays, I guess you don't really need these, but back then that was important. So that's a cool, cool piece of design. Now one thing is that the battery on this laptop obviously doesn't work anymore. Also the internal clock battery isn't working. Actually, I'm just gonna unplug that again. Let's have a look around the sides. So you've got, uh, I think that's an SD card slot. Got um, headphones. Not too sure what that one is. I haven't had a look yet. Um, in here, another kind of proprietary import uh, input, I think. And there's the big battery. See, so the battery is actually on the outside. And I guess that's what makes, uh, makes the laptop itself so thin. And then going on the other side, looks like a, is that a micro USB, I'm not too sure. Something else here, actually, <laughs> I need to go through the spec sheet. Looks like a, a infrared port here. Something else in there, what is that? I don't know what that is. We'll have to see. USB and then the power. I'm gonna put it back down. I've got it plugged in. I'm using a I'm using a generic kind of laptop adapter, which works really well. You can see there that I've got like a different plug just to make it fit. And there you go. So going through the uh, specs. So yeah, this one's picking up is 366 megahertz with 128 megabytes of RAM. It does have a generic graphics card, so I don't think it's got much 3D capability. It's got a Neo Magic, Magic Graph 256 AV driver. So I've got the spec sheet up on here. So it says, it's a super slim pro notebook. Pentium 2 processor, ultra portable, one inch thin, three and a half pounds. So back then that was pretty, pretty light. Brilliant 12.1 inch, XGA TFT screen and a 6.4 gigabyte hard drive. Let's double check that. I don't know if uh, the size of this one. This one is a 14 gigabyte one. So it was either upgraded later on or maybe it was it was an option when they bought it. Oh yeah, so that stick on the left is a Sony memory stick. Remember when Sony, well, they still have their 
proprietary memory sticks, heaps of things. Such a cool little machine. And like, I still think the design kind of holds up today. The fact that I've got these two next to each other, this one doesn't look like it's 20 years old. Well, maybe it does, but it doesn't look so obviously 20 years old that <laughs> you think it's a piece of junk. Still quite nice. And I think that's um, down to Sony's design. I have tried a couple of games. Because what I have to find, I have to find a game that is XP compliant plus is on a CD and not a DVD. So for example, I've got the Fallout collection, which would be great to run, that is able to run on XP, but it's, um, it's on a DVD, so I can't load it. But I've got these two. I've got Doom, we'll quickly load it up. It runs fine, obviously. And then I've also got Need for Speed 3, which does run, but it runs in the lowest resolution and I believe in software mode. So either the game isn't picking up any 3D capabilities or uh, maybe the laptop's just not powerful enough to run it. So I'm just gonna boot into Doom. Now there is one dead pixel just there. It's probably hard to pick out. It's a tiny little green spot there, but uh, there is one. Also the speakers, they're a bit tinny, but you can hear they are working still. Obviously you're not gonna get much uh, amazing uh, sound out of those. Now I don't have a mouse, so I don't know how the original Doom players played Doom just with keyboard. I find that pretty tricky. Definitely a lost skill. Anyway, that's Doom. So it's pretty good. Because this is Windows XP, um, can't really go into DOS, uh, or not proper DOS anyway, and run any games like that. So that would be one of the, one of the benefits of having Windows 98 on here, would be then that I could go into DOS and use proper DOS mode uh, for some games. Sony really packed in a lot of quality, but I imagine they charge for this. I don't think I have seen any price guides for this, but I assume it was probably over 3,000. I'll, uh, I'll have a look online and see if I can find some old adverts. These Ultrabooks, these original Ultrabooks, they didn't go for cheap money. <laughs> all right, let's skip all the uh, intro. So that's like, Streaming off of that, that's running pretty fast. So this game's from 1998, so probably about the same same year. Now I haven't changed any of the graphical settings, so I let the game just automatically choose, I guess, what it thought was going to run the best. So let's, uh, let's just run through, let's just do this first race. And here we go. So you can see here it's in super low resolution, it's like 320 by whatever. Um, but I must say, even at this, the lowest resolution, it, it runs pretty smoothly. So it's definitely playable. Maybe I should think about getting the Sidewinder connected and installed um, so I can play, play a bit more. So here we go. Yeah, very low resolution. It's like playing a PlayStation. But back then, this would be pretty cool. If you're a businessman and you're on the airplane and you're a bit bored, you could crack on with a bit of Need for Speed 3 in low resolution, but this is this is running at a decent frame rate. It's pretty smooth. I don't know, 30 frames per second at least. Whoa! Alright. Alright, let's skip that. Let me pull out the Toshiba, and then you can see the difference between the two laptops. Okay, so here on the right, we've got the Toshiba 490XC DT. This is, I believe, Pentium 2, I think 266 actually. This one's got 160 megabytes of RAM, but this one's also running Windows 98. But you can totally see the difference. I think they came out relatively same sort of time. This one probably a little bit later, maybe, maybe up to nine months later or something. But look at the difference in terms of like laptop Size, this one's a bit tricky to see, but the Toshiba's maybe twice as thick. Look how thick that one is, it's a bit of a beast. Quite a bit heavier as well, you can see it's a lot chunkier. When they say that the Vio was a, the, an ultra portable, uh, then it 
in comparison to this one, it surely is, you know. Um, and you can see even from the color scheme, so this is nice and vibrant, this vibrant violet, uh, violet colors. Also the buttons are still feel really nice, the, tra the trackpad is really nice. This one, these rubber, these rubber things here, they're, they're starting to um, peel off and get all sticky. I think they they need moisturizing, I believe. And look at the keys, they're all like fading and kind of changing horrible colors. It's definitely night and day between the two. Like I love this machine because it's got Windows 98. It's, it's more versatile at the moment for me in the games that I like to play. And it's fun to, to play around with. But this one, you can see the, uh, the extra amount of care in the design that came with this. To be fair, this one does have a um, CD-ROM drive included inside. This one has it external, so that's how they kind of make it a little bit more uh, portable and thinner. But yeah, look at, the, look at the difference between the two. It's just interesting to see a comparison of two laptops from around the same era. I imagine that the technology was moving so fast in the late 90s, you know, like a nine month difference between the two is actually quite a big difference in terms of um, uh, progression of hardware and things like that. There you go. A little bit of an introduction to this little laptop, which I'm, I'm going to keep to the side and play around with a little bit more. And just the right timing, here's the screensaver. So if you enjoyed listening or looking back at these laptops, um, tell me in the comments if you want me to do anything particularly, do some benchmarks, I don't know, try some games out on them. I don't know, really, just um, tell me what you think. And uh, if it's your first time here, have a look around our channel. If there's some other content that you like, or if you like this kind of stuff, then consider subscribing. All right, see you around and uh, have a good week, guys. Bye.